Over the past decade, I've explored the north of the Philippines countless times to visit different provinces. And one of the routes I've had in mind is to visit Aurora in the east and traverse the mountains of the Cordilleras to catch the setting sun in the west. When Fujifilm reached out to me to test their new camera, the Fujifilm XS20, it just made perfect sense to finally make it happen. Over the course of this journey, I'll be pushing the limits of this camera in various environments. One of the challenges of this plan is the unpredictability of the weather, especially in the mountains. Having only very limited time in each place, there's a slim window of opportunity to get the shots with fairly decent conditions. Even with meticulous planning, another challenge is finding places off the beaten path that may or may not be on the map. There's really only so much we can research while in search for the unknown and being ready with the right tools in hand makes a huge difference. So right now we are here in Dinajawan Aurora. The plan here is to catch a sunrise here and traverse Santiago, Banawe, Sagada, and Cervantes all the way to La Union where we will hopefully catch a sunset within uh, five days. Sun is finally out but obviously not the most ideal conditions for sunrise. And let's see how it's going to look like when we start going up the mountains. Whenever I visit remote areas, I always make sure I have enough batteries with me. With the XS20, this was never a problem, and I could shoot continuously throughout the day with a single battery. After a three-hour drive from Dinajawan Aurora, we arrived in Santiago Isabela only to find out that the Magat River was almost completely dried up. I was hoping to photograph migratory birds here, but the current conditions meant less of them around. And now we're searching for, a, for an area to go to for tomorrow morning, and hopefully we'll get it. Early next morning, we drove down to the river to get a closer look where we hoped to see the mangrove trees during sunrise. Navigating the riverbed took longer than expected, and it felt like a lost cause. A few kilometers later, we chanced upon this fisherman who just finished his morning's work. I asked him if he could take me to the mangrove trees and he was so kind and willing to help. The boat we used was just enough for two people and could easily tip over with the slightest movement. This is such a good turnaround of events from a while ago where we literally couldn't shoot much. So I was taking photos in the boat. The boat is really tiny. Having a compact camera really helped. After the short trip to the mangroves, Mang Jr. invited us to his home and offered some coffee for us to drink. Started off feeling quite discouraged, you know, not catching up any of the birds. But we met Mang Jr. here who took me around the island and now we're about to have some coffee in their house, in their home. While I wanted to spend more time in Santiago, it was time to head up to the Cordilleras. It's been over two decades since I last visited Banawe, so this leg of the trip is something I've been looking forward to. The weather changed from hot to cold, and our arrival coincided with the local festival. This seemed like the perfect time to test the XS20 for some street photography at night. Shooting low light situations can be tricky. The camera is so compact and low key that it barely catches attention making it easy to get the angles I want, especially with the fully articulating screen. Getting the focus stack sharp in low light situations was a breeze due to the eye and subject detection of the XS20. That night, I couldn't get any sleep because the skies were clear. The idea of missing out on a Milky Way sighting was too good to pass up. It was truly such a beautiful night to witness. At 4.30 a.m., we were off rushing to Batad to catch the sunrise. I was already exhausted, but determined to make the most out of this morning. We hiked down and got lost, and it seemed like it was going to be a wasted morning. Literally, aimlessly walking. But you know what? I thought to myself, there's a reason we're here. But finally, we caught a clear view right on time as the sun revealed the details of this historic landscape. Since we're at a higher vantage point, you can try taking more telephoto photos with a nice light.
but that is truly a gem. And while I could stay here for a few days, we were once again off to the next destination. But of course, with a few stopovers along the way. Together was a breath of fresh air, and while I couldn't photograph anything that night, I had a good feeling of the sunrise we were going to catch that morning. Sunrise is in 20 minutes or so, and hopefully catch some clouds and some sun. It's quite dark, so yeah, quite chilly too. <laughs> Almost got lost. But yeah, good thing we're early. Definitely gonna do some long exposure, get a tripod out. After hiking down in the dark, we are greeted with a gloomy scene of clouds and layers of mountains. Wow, look at the view. So the sun is gonna come up here. There's almost too much for the sun to pierce through, but after patiently waiting, finally, it started to reveal itself. Basically, Fujifilm tasked me to create content with this camera, to make, to create photos with it. And when they told me that I can be creative with it, then I definitely wanted to do something in line with what I really do in terms of um, the way I create travel photography and landscape images. Um, I really wanted to be able to do something that will kind of challenge me and the camera as well. This morning was such a gift and definitely refueled our energy as we went down to Cervantes Ilocosur. Light is really nice, fields look alive. And we'll try to take some portraits of the farmers if they're open to it. I've visited this place a few times in the past, but I've always wanted to explore the back roads of the beautiful farm fields in this destination. They're so nice. <laughs> we literally just told them what we were trying to do, and they were very nice about it, and was very welcoming and warm to us. Okay lang po, mixture lang po. Salamat po. okay lang. I've been wanting to go to this spot ever since I saw it uh, three years ago. It wasn't easy to navigate through the narrow paths that a locus only used, but the people we met and the views we witnessed made it all worth the uncertainty. If we left without me doing that, I just felt like I would feel bad. And um, I wanted to also photograph him um, against um, his entire environment, so it, it worked out great. We had so much spontaneous encounters here, in places I never thought I could visit, but it was so special to get to know some of the farmers and experience their genuine hospitality. That seems to be the trend here in Cervantes. People are so warm and open to um, engaging with strangers and having their photo taken. Despite all the challenges and physical demands of this trip, the feeling of witnessing epic landscapes and meeting the kind locals along the way truly made it worth every bit. We made it finally here in La Union. Six provinces in six days. Feeling really exhausted, but feeling very fulfilled. Having all the gear in the world won't matter if you aren't able to take photos, especially in key moments that happen unexpectedly. By carrying less gear, I've been able to focus on what's around me without anything weighing me down. It all started with a simple idea of traversing from the east to the west. But the things we've witnessed along the way were beyond rewarding. <laughs>